Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our McLean County Chamber of Commerce Town Hall with the McLean County Health Department. Today, we're sitting down with Jessica McKnight and Amy Hancock from the McLean County Health Department regarding updates on COVID-19 and its effects on local business community and the mental health of our local employees. Before we dive into our topic today, we wanna to recognize our August Video Resource Library sponsor, the Shirk Family Foundation. By sponsoring our educational programs, the Chamber is able to provide our member eds and town halls to our membership free of charge. All of our member ed and town hall presentations can be found on our social media platforms, but also on our video resource library at mclaincochamber.org. The video resource library is found under the member resources tab on our website. If you haven't been, make sure to check it out. We have a lot of great resources like this. And we just wanna say thanks again to all of our sponsors for the video resource library who make this possible uh, to put out free to our membership. All right, now I'd like to turn things over to Jessica with the McLean County Health Department. Uh, if you guys are on here live, if you have any questions you wanna drop in the chat or on Facebook, we'd be happy to answer those as we go. Uh, otherwise, go ahead, shoot us an email. We'll be sure to get back to you with some responses there. Um, but good morning. Welcome, Jessica. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for joining us again this month. We appreciate your time giving us an update on COVID as it's affecting our uh, business community here. Um, I guess just to kick things off, um, how are we doing in McLean County as it relates to our overall positivity rates and vaccination rates, um, especially with uh, the Delta variant, I think has creeped up since our last update with you. Yeah, last update was in June. So things definitely look a little bit different than they did back in June. Um, our positivity rate, which is the percentage of tests that have been completed that come back positive has been at around 4%. And that's been since July. Um, in June, just to give a perspective, we got down to around under 1% positivity. And even recently, we've seen our testing numbers increase. So, you know, 4% of a small number is, is, is a lot, but 4% of an even larger number gives you a perspective of, you know, what we are seeing. We're definitely seeing an increase in positive cases. Um, July, we were seeing around 30 new cases a day. That was our daily average. So far for August, we are um, creeping up on 50 average per day. Vaccination, you know, it's, it's definitely slowed down. Um, you know, we are around 60% of the eligible residents in McLean County, so that's age 12 and over, are fully vaccinated. And um, you know, a good thing is 50% of our age 12 to 17 are fully vaccinated, so those, those kiddos that are back in school. Um, however, you know, those, those are positive numbers, but uh, around 84,000 um, individuals in McLean County are not fully vaccinated. And we have around 25,000 that are under 12 who are very vulnerable right now because they're ineligible for vaccines. So, uh, you know, we just encourage everyone to get vaccinated because we do know how effective it is at helping us control transmission and keep people out of the hospital, prevent severe illness. Well, uh, how concerned should we be about um, COVID still, about Delta variant and other variants that are, are popping up um, for vaccinated and unvaccinated people? Um, is this going to be, I've, I've heard people say, a flu-like thing that comes each year and is not of great concern? Is this still up in the air, how serious Delta and other variants might be moving forward? Yeah, so to talk a little bit about the vaccines, you know, just to, to remind people that their, their purpose is to keep ind individuals from having severe illness, from being hospitalized, or from, from dying from COVID. And, you know, there's a lot of things that we are learning about SARS-CoV-2, which is the virus that causes COVID-19. But what we do know is that vaccines are effective at preventing hospitalization and death, even right now with the Delta variant. Um, you know, we are still in the midst of a pandemic, high community transmission being experienced throughout you know, our state and the U.S. So that mixed with the new Delta variant, which is more infectious, uh, it means that everybody should be more cautious right now. So again, those things getting vaccinated 
And then even if you are fully vaccinated, and especially if you are unvaccinated, evaluating your situation or activities that you're participating in and the level of risk associated with those. And then take appropriate precautions to keep yourself and others safe. So we talk a lot about layered mitigation strategies and most of them are the same that we've been using for the last year and a half, masking, social distancing, ventilation, ventilation. So, you know, if you can be outdoors and then obviously a very important one is the added vaccination that's available to us. Also, uh, I just want to you know, put a plug out there, stay home from work or school if you are sick. That's very important right now. And if you do have COVID symptoms, get tested. So even if you are fully vaccinated, if you have symptoms of COVID-19, get tested. And then if you do test positive, isolate and follow contact tracing recommendations to help us prevent further spread. And where do vaccines stand with these new variants in terms of, of efficacy, in terms of people? I know there was talk of needing maintenance doses for some of them. Yeah, so uh, you know, as I mentioned, the vaccines that we have available to us right now are still showing to be very effective against the Delta variant in preventing hospitalizations and death. So, you know, um, as I mentioned before, that's what vaccines are intended to do and what, the, what they, we are glad that they are effective against. We will still unfortunately see breakthrough cases, um, but you know, cases reporting then less severe symptoms and again, keeping people out of the hospital. Sorry. And, you know, vaccines are very readily available right now in McLean County and across the state, which is which is great. Um, so there's a few ways that you can find out about where vaccines are available. Vaccines.gov is a website where you can type in your zip code and find within, you know, 25, 50 miles, all the places that vaccines are available to you or on our McLean County Health Department website, health.mcleancountyil.gov. We've got listed clinics that we're doing out in the community. Uh, we also then again have a link there to vaccines.gov. So, you know, they're very readily available and are proving to be very effective, even against the Delta variant. Well, that's encouraging. Uh, we have had some local businesses um, introducing masking policies. It seems like a majority have not. Um, obviously, I think to your earlier comments, the more you can do for the multi-leveled strategy is better. Do you have any recommendations for employers in terms of requiring masks for their customers or their employees? So you know, as an employer, what we want to do is keep our employees and our patrons safe and healthy. So we need our employees and our patrons to be safe and healthy in order for our businesses and ultimately for our community to prosper. And there is evidence that shows us that masks limit transmission just as there is evidence that shows us lack of masking and mitigation measures lead to increased cases. So there've been two recent uh, MMWRs, which is Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Reports that uh, put out in the last year that look at both of those different scenarios. So, you know, we saw summer camps um, this year showing us really again, um, how lack of masking leads to tra community transmission ultimately, because it's not just within that small environment. Ultimately, you know, people go home, they go to other areas and then can continue just to spread the virus. So, uh, you know, I, the Delta variant, we've talked about it. It's at least two times as infectious as previous variants that we have seen so individuals are more at risk if they're unmasked, unvaccinated, and not social distanced. Uh, a case amongst your employees where precautions aren't being taken could take out an entire workforce. Uh, and if all employees are sick, then it's hard to do business. Uh, none of us know how our bodies are going to respond to a COVID-19 infection. Perfectly healthy individuals have been hospitalized and have unfortunately from, died from COVID. So we, we do have the means uh, and the methods to reduce transmission and keep people safe. So that, that's what I would recommend. I think important to note, especially as I have heard parallels of those institutions that not drop the masking policy, hospitals, first responders, things like that, and how there's higher rates of infection there. Just again, a, a good reminder that those are people who are dealing with it more frequently and that there is strong evidence that masking is effective and uh, preventative and keeping your employees healthy and, and your operation going um, is important to keep in mind when considering some uh, some COVID procedures. But 
Um, I know you brought in um, Amy Hancock, your uh, behavior health program manager. Um, we had some mental health related uh, questions from our membership last time that uh, I think you thought she might be um, well attributed to answer here today. All right, give me just one minute. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hey, Amy. Thanks for being Hi. with us today. No, thank you for having an interest in mental health. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's it's certainly been brought to the forefront throughout the last year and a half. Um, I, I think probably never more than during the lockdown, but uh, it seems to be a rising concern again as um, we bring back masking policies and uh, wherever you sit on it, it seems that it can be a a uh, frustrating experience for a lot of people. So um, where I guess just overall, do you think we are with, with mental health concerns related to COVID? Are those starting to ease? Do you see as we're bringing back some masking policies that those are increasing in severity again? Yeah, so that's a, a great question. And um, during the height of the pandemic, many individuals were experiencing isolation. And isolation definitely is a um, component that can um, increase the risk of mental health challenges. Um, but we don't have enough research yet to fully even know the, the impact of the pandemic on people's mental health. But there is enough research at this point to know it's crucial that we continue to create a culture that promotes healthy mental health. Um, and as far as the masking, um, there's just not any accessible data or research to indicate an increase of mental health challenges directly related to that re reintroduction of masking policies. Um, but like you said, like we definitely have to continue to have mental health at the forefront um, because there are a lot of individuals um, struggling right now with new mental health challenges or just mental health challenges being exacerbated. Sure, I, I definitely understand that we wouldn't have the, the research <laughs> at this point to, to back that up, but I think we all know uh, anecdotally, if not personally, that, that those concerns um, are, are more relevant now than ever. Um, with that in mind, what can employers do to help support their employees? What can employees be doing or, or asking of their employers and, and workplaces? Uh, is there anything that we can all be doing just to uh, kind of keep on top of our mental health? Yeah, sure. And so as far as what employers can do and see it, excuse me, because I took some notes to help me stay on track with this. But as far as what employers can do to help support um, employees' mental health, there's many things that an employer can easily do to support employees' mental health. Um, so they can encourage staff to take a break and supervisors also model taking a break. Um, they can practice open and direct communication to help practice empathy squash rumors and reduce stress, especially during this time of so much uncertainty. Um, and staff check-ins between a supervisor and employee can be a safe place to practice safe and open communication. Um, employers can also promote overall health by sharing materials such as brochures, flyers, and videos to all employees about the signs and symptoms of poor mental health and opportunities for treatment. Um, create a work atmosphere that allows for staff connection, whether that be virtually or in person. Um, create and maintain dedicated quiet spaces um, for relaxation activities. And if your agency has an EAP or employee assistance program, make sure that you're promoting how to utilize that to your staff. And then the other part as far as what can employees ask of their employers, um, which I thought was a really good question. And there's a few points I wanna highlight that employers can ask their employee, employee, employees can ask their employers um, to promote and support mental health. Um, an employee can ask about specific agency programs or initiatives that promote overall wellness. Um, employees can ask their employer on how they can become involved in creating or continuing to promote a healthy work culture. And so I think it's really important for employees not to just wait on supervisors or employers to, um, to promote or to come up with an initiative. Employees can definitely see where 
um, they have bandwidth um, and ability to, to ask about creating or continuing some of those healthy work culture initiatives. Um, employees can encourage employers to offer mental health and stress management education and programs that meet their needs and interests if they're not in place. And then employees can also, also help ask their employers for routine check-ins that focus on creating manageable goals, especially during this time um, that there's so much stress, um, providing education on job performance and tasks to help with that transparency and maintaining a safe place to be able to communicate their challenges that may be impacting their overall mental health. Um, and then I think lastly, you asked just like, what can we do, any of us can do in regard to our mental health? And I think a lot of those um, suggestions that I just provided also fit into that, but also just being forgiving of ourselves. This is an extremely difficult time. We're really exhausted. Like you said, like, I can't give you a great answer based on research, which is um, my, which would be my preference, but as far as anecdotally and what we do have in research um, thus far is like, we're just exhausted. Um, and so we're, we're tired and we're not really going to be able to perform necessarily at the level that we would have been able to perform pre-pandemic. And so we're all learning new normals. Um, we're trying to you know, make the best out of the change. And so as far as our own mental health, I think just giving ourselves some forgiveness allowing ourselves to have relaxation, taking breaks, staying connected with our loved ones. And also remembering like mental health is a very, very normal part of our health. And if we need assistance um, or we feel like we need um, to seek professional help, that, that is absolutely um, acceptable. And um, I would definitely encourage anyone to do that if they feel like that would be something that would be beneficial to them. Yeah, I, I think a lot of those would just be good habits or, or processes to put in place regardless of, of COVID or just mm -hmm. as a maintenance to keep healthy um, mentally, emotionally, in all of those ways, uh, especially important right now with COVID. But um, in terms of having a mental health concern, what would be a, a first step somebody could take or what resources would I have to get in touch with uh, if I do have concerns or I want more information? Sure, and that's a great question. And so if you're having mental health concerns, um, one of the easy things that a lot of people can do is if you go to like Mental Health America, there's a lot of self-assessment tools that you can complete just to, you know, am I, is this depression um, or is this just kind of a hard time right now? Just because it can be hard to, you know, that fine line between I'm just having a rough week versus, you know, this is really something more than that. And also um, maybe if there's some family, friends that you feel safe and able to talk to them about, you know, some of the challenges you're experiencing, just to have that empathy and a different perspective um, to help identify if you feel like it's important for you to reach out for professional help, um, or if you feel like friends and family or other supports or resources um, or something that would be beneficial or in addition to professional help, of course. Um, but as far as, McLean County is very rich in resources and mental health resources. Um, there's a lot of mental health resources. And so I would always um, suggest contacting PATH at 211. Um, and so PATH can provide you, uh, provide an individual with resources that would be specific to their needs. Um, and so a lot of people may not know that if you, you can call PATH other than just being in a crisis. And so even if you're just like, gosh, I, I don't know where to turn and the web is really overwhelming or family has so many suggestions and it's hard to digest, um, PATH is an, an amazing resource our community has um, to offer to um, just say, you know, here's some easy digestible um, places that you can turn to specific to what you're talking about. Path is a great resource, and I, I think around here at least one we might take for granted sometimes. Yeah. And good to remember that it's one that we can take advantage of ourselves. And uh, always important to remember you don't have to wait for something to be an emergency or, or top level concern. Um, if, if you have any inkling to to start doing something about it now or looking for help, or uh, as you said, I think well, uh, just be a little more forgiving with yourself, especially during this time when. All of us, our patience is is running a little thin. So yes, definitely, definitely. 
Uh, well, finally, just uh, kind of unrelated, but just as all of our work uh, here at the chamber has kind of revolved around this for the last week and a half, uh, um, would you or Jessica have any thoughts on um, concerns, either mental health or COVID related, um, related to the students coming back into town, a lot of people coming in from other areas, um, ways that might affect positivity rates, or is that not something that's a part of our concern right now? Sure, so I will um, quickly um, give some last thoughts from the mental health side, and then I'm going to pass it to Jessica to talk more about the specific to COVID. Um, and so some of the minimal research that we have available right now is showing that youth are really being highly impacted um, from, their mental health is being highly impacted from just so many of the stressors of, of this pandemic. Um, as you think about like younger youth or even college students during that transition age, um, our brains aren't fully developed until we're about 25 or 26. Um, we have, we just haven't had a lot of life experience maybe to help us develop resiliency versus um, individuals, adults um, or older individuals. Um, and so there's just many things. And plus like these are really high milestones for these folks, whether they're starting college or continuing to be in college. And um, you know, this, this pandemic definitely puts a damper on those milestones. And so um, as far as like, coming back and being in school and mental health, I think it's just really important um, to, for as a community to continue to promote mental health and to, um, with youth, like listen to what they're saying or their challenges and not just write it off as, you know, this is just, you know, something silly, they'll be fine, but just really listening to what they're going through and trying to be as supportive as possible and just continuing to promote professional mental health resources. And I know a lot of our um, campuses um, in this community have amazing mental health resources available on campus. They have referrals. So just really helping um, support them and you know, reaching out to, to have um, that, that support and help um, because they are definitely um, being highly impacted in many ways by this pandemic. So, and then I'm going to switch this over to Jessica. All right. So, you know, for COVID, I guess, you know, are there concerns related to the return of students to McLean County? Uh, you know, my overall concern because, you know, COVID affects everyone is, is apathy and that's, you know, apathy at any age. Yeah, you know, as Amy mentioned, I know we're all, we're all tired. We're tired of COVID. We wish it would just go away. We're ready to get on with our lives, but the truth is it's still here. It's not over. And, you know, we have over a year now, um, you know, where we have lost over 240 of our friends and neighbors and our relatives that show us how serious this virus is and for anyone again at any age. And though there's still a lot that we're learning, we do know that there are things that each of us can, that, that we can do to reduce transmission and keep ourselves and ultimately our community safe. And that's, you know, get vaccinated. That's, that's my number one right now is get vaccinated. Then also wearing your face covering, wear your mask, and then assessing your situation and determining when it's appropriate to add additional layers of mitigation. Uh, you know, it would it would be easy for us to point a finger at one age group and, and place blame. Um, you know, but that's just not necessarily the case. Again, this is just, it's a it's a global pandemic that we're experiencing. And you know, I can say from the health department perspective, we've worked with our universities to provide and promote vaccination. You know, they, they have measures in place to keep students um, and, and faculty as safe as possible. Same thing with our K through 12, the, the schools have worked over the last year and a half to ensure that they can provide an environment um, that is as safe as possible for in-person learning. So, I mean, again, that's, that's kind of my takeaways is that, you know, we, we all have something that we can do to, to help get through this pandemic and you know it it's still here right now and and it is a serious thing well thank you yeah 
just to reiterate there, get vaccinated first and foremost and, and wear your mask and social distance and be responsible in that way. Um, I think another good point you had made there is um, for those who are just concerned about keeping their business running and open, uh, making sure your workforce is there and available and safe and not shut down for weeks at a time um, is a good bare minimum approach to do that and a great way to help um, with the community and, and COVID spreading. So. Um, Jessica, Amy, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you for your time and, and that of the uh, Lincoln Health Department. Um, we will put some links to some of those resources that you listed today, PATH and the uh, Mental Health Self-Assessment website uh, up on our video resource library uh, as we post this video on there. Also links to McLean County Health Department's website, health.mcleancountyil.gov. Um, once again, we'd like to uh, thank our sponsor, the Shirk Family Foundation, for allowing this to be put out to our membership for free here today. Um, and again, if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to shoot them to us at uh, the links we'll be providing. We'll be happy to get back to you with some answers. But um, Jessica, Amy, thank you again so much. We appreciate it. All right. Thanks for having us.